Happy Friday, brokers, and happy Independence Day weekend. First, I would like to beg all of your pardon. I have been remiss in sending out these two-minute contract updates. I will be doing better in the future on those, especially for those of you that have asked and do find use in these. Today, I wanted to touch very briefly on multiple offers. Obviously, this is a much bigger conversation than a two-minute contract update, but I'm going to give you some of the bigger pointers, hopefully, that you find useful. So there's the seller's side of this conversation, and then there's the buyer's side of this conversation. On the seller side, if you're the listing broker and you're in a multiple offer situation, first of all, I recommend that you have a multiple offer grid of some kind, an Excel spreadsheet, maybe you hand write it out, where you side by side compare all of the different multiple offers that have come in. Some best practices on that. First, be sure you avoid any potential fair housing issues. When you reference these offers, I would be cautious on what you're identifying each of the offers as. I would recommend maybe leaving off buyers' names on there to avoid any mudding of the waters of a fair housing issue. Also, be careful that you're not committing any Article 15 violations of the NAR Code of Ethics by speaking untrue about other brokers, other brokerage firms, or their practices. And just because you may have an opinion may or may not mean that's an actual fact. So be very cautious you're not stepping into any Article 15 violations. We focus on the offer. We focus that it's a business transaction and what is going to be the best for the seller. Then on the buyer's side of this situation, it's our job as buyer brokers to figure out how we can best make that offer stand out for our client. It's our job to find out from the listing broker what's important to the seller. Typically, there are four things that matter the most to a seller, or there's four areas of things. There's money, time, convenience, and certainty. And what is the most important to that individual seller is the responsibility of the buyer broker to find out from the listing agent. What's important to your seller? Find that information out so that you can correctly guide the buyer in presenting their offers. Now, there's a lot of things that go into that. There's escalation clauses. There's appraisal gaps. Of course, cash is king, like it or not. But that doesn't mean that just because you have a VA transaction that might be a little more challenging, that that buyer can't win. They absolutely can. You just have to figure out how to make that work. So be sure you're maybe taking some multiple offer classes and you're really educating yourself on how to help your buyer's offer stand out, but you're also doing some best practices to protect sellers as well as to protect yourself in the future if we have any sort of litigation issues that come from the crazy time we're in. Hope you all are having a great Friday. I will keep in touch with my two-minute contracts. Take care.